Hello, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. Matching questions are very common in the listening test, so expect to get one in your test. You need to have a good strategy to answer this type of question successfully, and that's what you'll learn in this lesson. The lesson includes question types, sample questions, strategy and tips, a practice question, answers and vocabulary. This type of question usually appears in sections 1 or 3, in which the recording is a conversation between two or more people. The question will contain two sets of information, and you'll have to match them. Matching questions come in several different forms. Here are a couple of examples from past papers. In this first example, you're given a list of hotel names, A to E, and a list of features in the hotels. 1 to 4. You must listen to the recording and identify which hotel has which feature. In this second example you're given a list of course options 21 to 25 and a list of choices the student could make about whether or not he will take the course. You must listen to the recording and identify the decisions the student makes about each course. I'm going to use this second example to teach you the answer strategy and give you tips and advice on how to overcome the challenges presented by this type of question. You will have a short time to prepare before the speakers begin talking. Use this time to familiarise yourself with the question and focus your mind on what you need to listen out for. One of the biggest challenges with matching questions is that they can be confusing when you first see them. So start by analysing the question to make sure you fully understand what you have to do. There are two steps to this process. First, you need to understand the relationship between the question sentence and the question options 21 to 25. Highlight the key part of the question sentence and think about how it relates to these options. So the question is asking, what does Jack tell his tutor about media studies? What does Jack tell his tutor about women and power? What does Jack tell his tutor about culture and society? And what does Jack tell his tutor about identity and popular culture? Next, look at questions 21 to 25 in relation to the answer options A, B and C. So, does Jack tell his tutor that he will definitely do media studies? He may or may not do media studies? or that he won't do media studies? Does Jack tell his tutor that he will definitely take the women and power course? He may or may not take the women and power course, or that he won't take the women and power course? And so on. In matching questions, the questions will be mentioned in order in the recording, but the answer options will appear randomly. So for our sample question, the speakers will first talk about media studies, then women and power, then culture and society, etc. The three decision options as to whether or not to take each course could be heard in any order. The next step in our strategy is to look out for synonyms and paraphrasing. Synonyms and paraphrasing will be used extensively in the recording and another good use of your preparation time is to quickly think of some words and phrases that might be used to express the information in the question. First, let's think about the three answer options. Jack is not going to say, I will definitely do the introduction to cultural theories course. I may or may not do the culture and society course. I won't do the identity and popular culture course. He will use different phrases to convey the same meaning. You'll need to listen out for both positive and negative vocabulary and sentence structures. For example, I'm very interested in women and power, so I think I'll go for that one. I'll give media studies a miss, as I did a similar module last year. If you can think up a few examples of what you might hear Jack say, you'll be well prepared for picking out synonyms and paraphrasing as the recording plays. You'll also need to watch out for distractors. The examiners will try and catch you out with these. A distractor is a word or phrase that changes or corrects the original piece of information given. 
So you may be given an answer and then have it taken away again. Here are a couple of sample sentences containing distractors. I've highlighted the relevant words. I'd really like to study identity in popular culture, but I don't like the lecturer, so I'm not going to take it. I discounted culture and society. However, a friend took it last year and loved it, so I'm going to seriously consider it as an option. But and however are common distractors, but there are many other words and phrases that can be used to change the information given. There are several present in the recording, so listen carefully for them. You'll also hear Jack changing or clarifying decisions as the conversation progresses and he's given new information by the tutor, Dr. Ray. The best approach to marking the answers is to write A, B or C next to a question as soon as you think you've heard the correct answer. But continue to listen carefully in case you find that you're wrong. If this happens, you can quickly cross it through and write the correct answer beside it. You can write on your test paper as much as you want to. You'll have 10 minutes at the end of the listening test to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Read the question carefully to make sure you understand exactly how the answer must be written. Here are the instructions for our sample question. Write the correct letter A, B or C next to questions 21 to 25. You may choose any letter more than once. For matching questions in the IELTS listening test, you must write a letter for the answer, not a word or phrase. So, if the answer is, he'll definitely do it, you must write A, not the sentence. If you write the words, he'll definitely do it for the answer, it will be marked wrong, even though the information is correct. Don't throw away marks with silly mistakes like this. My final tip is to never leave a blank space on the answer sheet. If you miss an answer, take an educated guess. This gives you at least some chance of getting it right. Don't stress about a missed answer or it will affect your ability to answer the next set of questions. Just make your choice and move on. It's now time for you to practice using this strategy on our sample question. Here it is again. Pause the video, listen to the recording and identify the answers. Write them down so that you can check them later. When you've completed this practice activity, continue the video. I go through the answers next. To hear the recording, click the link in the notes below this video titled Course Options Recording. Here are the correct answers. Pause the video while you check them against yours. Then we'll go through them one at a time. Answer 21 is C. He won't do media studies. Here's a section of dialogue this answer appears in. So, for example, the media studies option will cover quite a lot of the same area you did in the core module on mass communications this semester. That is the development of the media through the last two centuries in relation to political and social issues. Hmm, well, that was interesting, but I've decided I'd rather do something completely new. There's a women's studies option, isn't there? This is how the answer has been paraphrased. He won't do it has been paraphrased as, but I've decided I'd rather do something completely new. Note the use of the distractor, but, as Jack goes from a position of interest which could suggest an answer of maybe, to a decision of definitely not to do the course. Answer 22 is A. He'll definitely do women and power. Here's a section of dialogue this answer appears in. Yes, women and power. Again, it has a historical focus. It aims to contextualise women's studies by looking at the legal and social situation in the 19th and early 20th centuries. So it would be useful if I intended to specialise in women's studies, but I'm not sure I actually do. Well, it might still be useful to give you an idea of the issues involved. It's taught by Dr. Steed. Really? I'll sign up for that then. 
At first, Jack says that he's not sure about taking women's studies, which suggests that he may or may not do it. But when he hears that the tutor teaching the course is Dr Steed, he changes his mind and decides that he will definitely take the course. This is how the answer has been paraphrased. For he'll definitely do it, Jack says. I'll sign up for that then. Answer 23 is B. He may or may not do culture in society. Here's the dialogue. What about the option on culture and society? That addresses the historical debate on the place of culture since the Industrial Revolution in Britain. So, a historical focus again. Do I get the message you're not so keen on history? Well, it's just we seem to have done quite a lot this semester. Anyway, I'll think about that one. This is how the answer has been paraphrased. For he may or may not do it, Jack says. I'll think about that one. Answer 24 is also B. He may or may not do identity in popular culture. Here's the dialogue. If you're interested in a course focusing on current issues, there's the option of identity and popular culture. That approaches the subject through things like contemporary film, adverts, soap operas and so on. Oh, that sounds interesting. Can you tell me who runs it? Well, it's normally Dr Stevens, but he's on sabbatical next semester, so I'm not sure he'll be running it. It should be decided by next week, though. Right, well, I might wait until then to decide. This time, the phrase Jack uses to say that he may or may not do it is, I might wait until then to decide. Answer 25 is C. He won't do introduction to cultural theory. Here's the dialogue. And the last option is introduction to cultural theory, isn't it? I'm quite interested in that too. I was talking to one of the second year students and she said it was really useful. It made lots of things fall into place. Yes, but in fact in your major you'll have covered a lot of that already in Communication 102, so that might be less useful than some of the others. Oh, I'll forget about that one then. This is how the answer has been paraphrased. For he won't do it, Jack says, I'll forget about that one then. Initially, Jack says that he's quite interested in this option, but on discovering that he's already covered a lot of the material in a previous module, he discounts it. Here's a summary of the answers to help you focus in on the vocabulary and sentence structures used. Pause the video for a moment and study them. I hope you found this lesson on matching questions helpful. Now, practice using this strategy on other questions from past papers. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again soon. Goodbye for now.